Registry Drafts, and we are here to talk about kind of the state of VRD and uh, talk about some cards. We haven't done one of these for a little bit. One of the interesting things is the Discord has really taken off as a place for discussion, and that means that we have kind of taken some of this the, these videos a little bit to there and don't do them as much, but we really want to keep them active and, and try to do a little more coming up as well. So That's right. The Discord has been, I mean, there have been three drafts that have fired off since the last live one we did. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's even slowed down right before sure. the last live one we did. Or there was there was a flurry through the end of the end of the last year. True. And, and, I mean, there's also been ones beyond the regular vintage history drafts, right? There was that one that you had to draft every letter of the alphabet. There was the Bizarro one. There have been all sorts of, uh, of strange shenanigans right. happening out over there. A lot of people want to try out new and interesting things. Uh, the ABC one I did not get involved in, though I kind of wish I would have. It, it looks pretty interesting. Uh, the Bizarro one I had no interest in. So There's a Legacy one spinning up soon, too. That one I'm growing interest in. Like, yeah. I, you know, it, it will require reframing my brain a little bit. <laughs> but I have a growing interest in the legacy one, and I have the itch to play one. So, so the last time we talked here, we uh, we went through and reviewed. Uh, I think it was AFR and Midnight Hunt. Yeah. So we we talked through those. Most of those cards didn't see a ton of play. Uh, yeah, there's a few. Um, you find some prisoners has seen a little bit. Mm -hmm. and I think one or two drafts from AFR. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Asherak, but I don't think anyone's really pulled the trigger yet. No. Uh, the counter spell saw play. Yeah, the count with the AFR the counter spell. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that. I, I liked that one. I was a fan of that one. So totally. Um, and then the, the midnight hunt stuff. Um, there there has been some stuff drafted again. Uh, I don't know how well Poppet Stitcher did pretty well for me. I had Bitter Blossom and a lot of token producers. So the ability to like flip it and turn those into three threes pretty quick was mm -hmm. pretty effective. Um, and so, but yeah, so those stuff I think mixed around uh, here and there. Uh, but yeah, the newer stuff, power level down a little bit, so not as earth shattering, like that. and that's good. That's good. We don't, we're not getting everything. Yes. Um, we had a lightning draft, so this was Discord, but it was it, rather than asynchronous Discord going over like a month, it was all at one time, and we it had that intense. in January. And I drafted several Val cards in there, mm -hmm. uh, and a couple of them did really well for me. Uh, one of them never really moved out of my sideboard, uh, but uh, one of them did particularly well, and that was, uh, well, well, I'll be discussing it later. Uh, but yeah, so Val has seen a little bit, but again, not too much. Um, I think the lands have potential. Now there's just so many lands, you know, it just kind of depends. I don't think they're bad lands, necessarily. Um, well, nothing is as good as bad lands, that's true. This, but, yeah. uh, so, <laughs> Absolutely. Today, uh, today we're going to be both. We, we came up blind with our own list of five cards from each of the last two sets, so from Vow as well as from Neon. Right. And uh, we're both going to be we're both going to be kind of presenting them to each other and making arguments why we think that those cards are good. And I, th I think that for some of these, there's more than five cards, obviously, that are going to see play, but mm -hmm. these are the ones that we think have long-lasting, kind of are interesting to talk about, right? Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, you want to you want to go first All with right. your uh, did you did you rank them? From, I did like, not rank them. Oh, no, neither did no. I. So let's we'll just start with Val because that was the is the oldest. Yep. So let's start with Val, and I'll start with the one I actually drafted. Okay. Um, which is Cemetery Prowler. Ooh. Let's see if I can find it a minute here. We're we're trying out the. Uh, it, is, it is not showing up, so we're gonna switch off of uh, Saint Lotus. I think this actually is gonna be. Uh, you missed Cemetery. It's E R Y. Oh man. It's a tricky word. Sem. E Terry? Yeah. There's like three E's in that word? Yeah, yeah. Okay. There may be two A's to spell, but the way they did it is this way, for sure. Well, that's reasonable. Uh, all right, so the Blue Cemetery card also got drafted in the Lightning Draft in the Spirits deck, um, which makes sense in the Spirits deck. But I think this one is particularly chonky. Um, it's a 3-4 for 3. It exiles a card when it comes in or attacks. Yep. It's got a very sweet stat, stat spot. The the extra ability, I think it worked like once for me, but mostly I was running, this was in a, a winning, it, it tied for the win uh, bug deck, and a uh, deck bug good stuff. And this was just a chonky boy who clogged the battlefield. And if they didn't deal with it, he just got, you know, he was just eating chunks away at life. And he came down pretty fast. I had, I had a lot of fast mana. I played him on turn two a lot. Um, and I, maybe even on turn one, one time, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think I could in that one, but I, I played him a lot on turn two and it's just like, okay, here's a turn two, three, four that X out a card and is going to let me play cheaper stuff possibly too and deal with it. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it looks like our, our uh, we're having some issues with uh, having some issues with encoding. So I'm gonna try try killing some processes here. Hopefully we're not dropping frames, um, but I think our, our quality is dropping a little bit right now. So okay. hopefully if I kill a couple things that are open here that shouldn't be open, that will solve some of that problem for us. But anyway, um, yeah, uh, Cemetery Prowler is also on my list, so okay. I'll just take this as an opportunity to keep it. Obviously, I think this one, um, for me, it's it's the main thing is it's a three four for three with vigilance mm -hmm. uh, that happens to do some graveyard hate, right? And then the last the last uh, line of the card is mostly gravy, right? That's something that I think yeah. is, is totally nice if it happens, but for the most part, you're just playing this card because it wrecks storm. Uh, it, it wrecks a lot of reanimator and other decks in the format, as well as just putting on a massive clock. Yeah, agree 100%. The, the, and especially because I think in green, you're often going to want this in like a green blackish. Uh, it never affected like my, my Assassin's Trophy or my Abrupt Decay because they're green black. So you, it can't be cheaper. That's right? fair. So the type of spells that I, I wanted often to exile, it really couldn't make cheaper. Um, it did make Planeswalkers cheaper a couple of times, which was pretty nice. <laughs> I can imagine just hitting hitting one of your own creatures or something in oh. the mid to late game, and at that point, suddenly you have extra mana line around. Absolutely, yeah. Sure. Um, cool. Um, so I'll go for the next one then. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Hullbreaker Horror was my next one. This is one that, obviously, Hullbreaker Horror is a play on uh, the classic... Uh, Tide Spell. Thank you, Tide Spell Tyrant. Um, I think that it's, I still think it's worse than Tidewell Spark Tyrant, but I think enough people are going to try it that it's going to see play. Okay. Um, so you can see here it's been taken one time out of five. It was it's, me. Yeah, and, and it was last pick. And it was last pick, and I never played it. Right. Uh, okay, I, I got enough. it because uh, there was a, a show and tell deck. Interesting. Okay. So it was the idea was just like, hey, I will bring it in against the show and tell deck. I think I actually did bring it in against them. Uh, it actually is drafted right now in the ABC draft in a reanimator show as well. I like it in a reanimator shell because it also has the has the kind of the titan thing that they used to do where this spell is still playable, right? It's a seven mana spell against the big control decks like a mana drain deck. You're going to be able to get to seven mana eventually. Mm -hmm. um, or with mana drain. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's a great point. Um, and yeah, I think it's just kind of like it, it's a breaker in the uh, control and control matchups. So Yeah, I think this card, I, I agree with you. This card's playable. Um, it is another one of the mini fatties that can slot into sneak and show decks. Yes. Can slot into reanimator strategies. Um, it could slot in as a finisher with a mana drain or with a mana drain plus ramp. I mean, I had a deck that was casting turn two prime times recently. <laughs> so, you know, this is not unreasonable in like a blue green shell. Um, you know, the... So, yeah, I, I think this is good. It's probably a little worse than Tyrant most of the time, but the spell can't be countered is especially nice in VRD. That's that's the reason, right? I think that it, yeah. I think it is it is worse than Tides Without Tyrant if you're reanimating it. Right. However, it is it substantially also, better. It can also bounce you, their spells, which is something Tyrant can't do. Correct. It can't bounce, it can't bounce, land, cannot bounce lands, though. And that's right. that's the, the critical part with Tides Without Tyrant, where you just end up shutting down the game with getting all their lands back to their hand. True. So, yeah, I agree, though. The, the card is playable. It, it's a niche card that will go, that competes against a lot of other fatties. So I think it really is going to depend on what the other decks I have agree. and what you have. Do you have enough cheap spells? In the end, why this was a bad pick for me for that sneak and show uh, thing was because I didn't have enough spells instance that I could cast to make it worthwhile. Right, yeah. At that point, it's almost a mana war would be better than this card, probably. Right. Yep. So, because if I'm not, if you don't have the instance to make the ability worthwhile, it doesn't matter. So, mm -hmm. uh, but if you're in a spells deck, for example, and you want something for their sneak uh, sneak attack or their show and tell, this is a solid there or definitely reanimator. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, it's, uh, hyphen points out in chat that the uh, the exiling of the graveyard. Uh, from the from the prowler that we we're just looking at is untargeted, which Ooh. means that you get to put it on the stack and they have to decide what they want to snapcast or whatever beforehand. Okay. They, they don't get to do it in response. Saucy. That's very saucy. That is pretty cool. Um, I don't think it'll come up that often, but it definitely is something that no. will matter in this format more than most. Yeah. So what was your next one? All right. My next one has seen play and it beat me in the face and it is ridiculous. And that is Maniform Hellkite. Maniform Hellkite. Yeah, this is one of the ones that I did not keep on my list because I'm just like... This will see play for the next two VRDs and then never see play again because it's a generic dragon. You know what? Right now, at least in the discords, spells decks are hot. The okay. spells, creatures, tempos deck. Sure. Um, Dom, Harvey did really well with one and Tino uh, has been crushing with them. Like these white, red, blue, um, some kind of combo of that spells decks have been really hot. This card is so hard to beat. <laughs> it's just producing this extra things at your face really really quick you know you you exile them. you don't get to keep them 
right? That that's the downside there. It's not long term, but their their big fatties come at your face pretty quick. And along with your pyromancer and every other little thing, it just overwhelms you. That's yeah. That, this is the thing. It's like it, it basically attacks on. I mean, it, I, not literally, right, but it attacks on uh, deal X damage where it's the mana value of the card, like, to every card that you cast. Right. So I can really see how it's good. It just doesn't seem like it's going to be a player that we're going to be seeing in two years kind of thing. I think we'll see it for a while, though. Right. That makes sense. Uh, Lightning Bolted has a great comment that we're going to talk about after we go through the, the two new sets, um, which is kind of the state of VRD overall. But, yeah, I like, want to get to that because that's a really great point, and I think that there's some good conversation there. Um but yeah, so my, my next one, uh, I, I didn't have the dragon on the list. I, I had, did have it on my, this card is C in play. It's going mm-hmm. to C play for a while. The next one I had was Boring, uh, a Deathcap Glade, and kind of just like all the generic lands there. Okay, uh, yeah. I, I think that they're they're all like incredibly playable. And uh, and they, uh, if, if you're in the colors and only in two colors, you probably want this card, right? Um, I, I don't think we're going to see them every single time. I think that they're probably somewhere in the realm of Isolated Chapel and the Buddy Lands. Um, I but th- I think that they're, they're, they're better than most lands. I think the up-down on these, the, the down on these is how badly do you need, how, how much are you relying on turn one like stuff? Sure. Some, some decks are, are, right? Some decks are really relying on that Mox land. Yes. And, I mean, there's a lot of times in VRD where I'm keeping one landers. I mean, it's just straight up. Like, I've got Mox land, Noble Hierarch. And, you know, so I'm not going to take these if I'm really, really he- playing for that turn one, turn two heavy. But if I'm a slightly slower game where I'm not, I can I can occasionally play. I don't want to play a turn one tap ever. Right. But where occasionally a turn one tap is not going to break my soul. Then yeah, these are absolutely great. So and again, it's just a we have a smorgasbord of lands basically. Totally, these are the kind of cards that I will. Pr- this land is one of the ones that I will probably never take myself because I like to do the decks that play like two to three mana spells and never get above three lands in play. But I think that a lot of people enjoy kind of the I'm going to have four and five mana spells and mm-hmm. planeswalkers right in the planeswalkers deck. I can see this being very good. Right. So. So all right, uh, my next one. I doubt's on your list. I have not dropped it yet, but I came really <laughs> close. Soren the Mirthless. Ooh, no, I have not. That one's not on my list. I'm, right. I guarantee that one's not going to show up here. So let's pull up Scryfall yeah. to see what, that one, what they say about this one. Uh, yes. uh, Soren the Mirthless. This is the emo Soren, right? This is, yeah, emo Soren. He's all sad at his daddy's wedding. You know? Yeah. Leaning against a wall. Leaning against a wall. Like all right, so this card on the top end is card draw, right? And also then it does, uh, you may reveal, you may reveal that card. And so you don't, it's Bob, but you don't have to draw it if it's too much life. Optional right? Bob. Uh, and then you've got a series of two, three black flying lifelinkers that you can make. And whatever with the ultimate on this one, I mean, it's a good ultimate. It's fine if you get to it. It wins. But, you know, if you don't get to it, you don't get to it. Um, so I think this card, just on the fact that it's card draw and a, and a series of chains, if you're in a walker's deck, uh, this card feels really good to me. Yeah. Uh, Chewie's asking about what's the scale for uh, for the Lotus score. It goes from 1 to 100, uh, where 100 is Black Lotus. It's a card. It's basically giving you the, the, the priority that it has taken. So if a card gets taken a lot... Uh, and it gets taken early on in the draft, it's going to have a high Lotus score. If it gets taken either infrequently or late in the draft, it will have a lower score. Hyphen, even on the scale of, on a different scale of Emo Sorens, this is the most Emo Soren. That's though. true. I mean, yeah. He is definitely, uh, listen to some My Black Parade right here. Oh, yeah. And he's very upset. He's got an earbud in right now, and he's very upset. <laughs> and uh, Daddy's getting married, and he's not happy about it. You know? That's true. So I think this card doesn't make my list. Um, I think that uh, yeah, and I, I didn't figure. I, I think that Karn is is kind of a, the logical equivalent to this card for me, where it's like it draws a card every turn. Uh, it has it has the ability to protect itself or like be your finisher if you want it to be. Um, Karn with pants, to be clear. Right, pants Karn. Uh, but this one, the the plus I think is fine. Um, I think that the minus is just so much worse, and the fact that it has double black and his mana cost makes it very hard to make it for me. So if, okay. if, if it made if it made Vampire Nighthawks, I'd be so on board with this card. But the fact that they don't have Death Touch to them, I think means you're going to get run over. And that's just not, not good enough for me. All right, that's legit. Uh, so for me, the next one is, uh, again, another cheap one. So this is, uh, and by cheap, I mean easy because it sees play already. Uh, so let's pull her up. I think this is a double, by the way. Uh, a double? As in we both have it on our list. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh Katilda Dawnheart Martyr. Yep, which is actually the next card on my list. So. Nice. 
Yeah, so she's, she, she saw play twice already. There were two different enchantment decks. I think we're seeing Enchantress is becoming a thing in 2020. Well, they've pushed Enchantress really hard. And, I mean, in Neon, there's even like a card that didn't make my list that came close, the one that gives your enchantment creatures plus one, plus one, mm-hmm. and then lets you double the effect of enchantments with the green and tap. Um, I mean, there are just... It, so they've pushed enchantments really, really hard, and uh, so we're going to see more Enchantress and Enchanter lists come, you know, making their way around the bin. Yes. Uh, which will be interesting because that means cards like Tranquility, you know, the we see a lot of the kill all artifacts cards. So the kill all enchantments cards will start to kind of move up in that realm too. Totally. Uh, yeah, the, the two mana versus the three mana on uh, whatever the other card is to Tranquility was huge. Just like I, I, I had Tranquility in that draft and somebody else had the two mana version. Uh, yeah. Nature's Peace, Nature something. Something like that. Uh, but it was it was really incredible to, to see kind of how much more important it was to land it in turn two. Um, but yeah, Katilda, I mean, she just shuts down any creature battles. So you just never have to worry about the lifelink becomes so massive, as well as they have to spend two spells on it. Both halves of her are just equally damning. Yeah. Uh, back to nature. Thank you, Jester. That's perfect. Uh, yeah, yeah, the flip side of her is really good. Uh, and she's strong. And the thing is, is because of the fact that is the number of spirits or enchantments, she's actually multi. So the second time right. she was drafted was not an enchantments list. It was a spirits list. True. Um, and, and it didn't do hot, but I still think the list is some, is, 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 can be strong. Um, you know, the, so. Yeah, I think Spirit, Spirits is a deck that I don't know, I don't know why it hasn't popped off, but it feels like the core is there. Yeah. Like that deck needs to happen at some point. So, uh, what was your last one? Uh, my last one is an interesting one. This is the one I, I said was going to int- probably intrigue you. And it will, I don't think it's been drafted. Um, Wash Away. Wash away. Oh, is this is this the three mana counter spell that you cost one sometimes? Yes. Yes, I love this card. That's uh, not on my list. I don't think it's going to see play, but I right. do love it. So this card is very dependent on what else is drafted, right? Mm-hmm. I agree. If there are a lot of decks that are going to be producing free spells, this card shoots up into a very solid counter spell because counter target pay blue pay one blue counter target spell that wasn't cast from its owner's hand mm-hmm. seems great. Um, if there's not a lot of decks that are playing free spells, and by a lot, I mean at least two. Um, then it's it's not draftable, right? Because then it's just cancel. Yes. But in if there is a couple decks that have spells that aren't from their hand, they don't have to be free. They could be Underworld Breach. They could be you know any variety of things, Mage. right? Yes. I'll, you know the strong decks like that. Then Watch Away is solid because again, it's at least two of those decks. It's going to be very very good. Uh, this card's obviously great in Commander, right? Because it hits the Commander for one. Mm-hmm. Um, but the so in there, it's a minimum a cancel, not great, but has the upside of being a, a nice, you know, hedge in any counter wars, right? The, the one thing I'll say for this card is that it also has, it's getting pushed by design philosophy that's been going on right now, where as people are, as they're pushing red into this, exile the top cards of your deck, you may cast them until next turn or this turn. Yeah. Like all those cards, as those cards keep getting better, and there will be some of them that are going to see play, I have one on my list coming up soon, uh, they... As those cards get better, this this kind of card will get better, right? Because right? it's encountered that as well. So. Yeah. So this is not an every draft card, but I think it's definitely one to keep in mind. We've got that long list of counter spells, and you know sometimes we forget them. But this is one that if you're looking at the draft mm-hmm. and you're like, hey, there's a lot of cards being exiled and cast. There's a lot of Yogmoth bargains, you know, whatever it may be. This card goes up in stock. Like, what's that artifact that Blyden took that costs four that lets you cast artifacts off the top? Um, Bolas of Citadel, yeah, like Citadel. both of those are both of those are options for this. Um, Future Sight just got a reprint right now in the new set with the, like the two mana Future Sight. Yeah, um, like th- there's there's this is legs. I agree. I, I don't I don't think it's going to see play for a while, but it's one that I think in two or three years, assuming that design philosophy keeps going, this right. is gonna this is gonna see it. It's definitely it's, one to keep in Mystic mind. Mystic Forge is the card. Cool. Uh, yeah, my last one. Uh, my last one here. I had a few honorable mentions like Olivia and Chandra that have seen play and I think have have potential. Um, the last one for me was Reckless Impulse, and this is the one I was actually just talking about. Right. So Reckless Impulse is two mana sorcery, which is, I think, the reason why it might not see play. Um, but X out the top two cards, you can play them until your next turn. So this is this is not end of turn, right? You don't mm-hmm. have to use the mana this time. Uh, it, it, the fact that it goes for a full two turns that you can cast the card, I think pushes this up for me. Yeah, and it's play, which is the important part, right? So it's not cast. Right, you can still so get your lands, get your lands out. So you hit land something, you've already played your land this turn, you can get your land next turn, and the spell. So, yep. no, I think this card's strong. Uh, I think, as you said, these cards are, are growing in strength. As someone playing a Prosper uh, Commander deck right now, um, I can definitely say that these cards are... And I've talked a lot with Brandon Curry about 
the possibility of Prosper in VEDH. I think if he was three mana, he would be, or in VRD, I think <laughs> if he was, yeah. Right, yeah. I think if he was just three mana, he would be VRD playable. I think sure. at four, he's probably iffy. Um, but, you know, so there are, no, I agree. This card's strong, and I, I think it's definitely playable here. And as a person that plays, has played these type of effects, uh, you know, I drafted, uh, you find some prisoners. Sure. Um, you know, I'm very attracted to this card for the format. The one thing I will say about it is that it kind of it requires you to be uh, in a low curve deck where you For something sure. like Burn, where you can actually play both of the cards. Uh, black even if you do it black red Luris. Sure, that right. seems reasonable. With, yeah, as a second sign in blood kind of right. thing. Right, with Croxa and things like that. Right. Yeah, but, God, Croxa with this is great. Um, but yeah, I think I think there's like a lot of reasons not to play this card, but I think that there are decks that are just looking for some card draw, and I think this is about as good as a sign in blood um, in those kind of decks. Absolutely. So, uh, any honorable mentions for that you want to throw out there? Um, you know, I, I said Cemetery Illuminator is one. Um, sure. Is an honorable mention. I, I didn't really. I this set didn't do a lot for me Same. on a lot of levels. Um, it just like I I didn't love this set. Um. I think it was, yeah, it didn't do much for me either. The one card I'm going to point out is Torrens. I don't think this card is going to see play necessarily right now. It's kind of just like too dumb as a beater. Mm -hmm. But I think that it has kind of the mentor aspect to it that uh, if if a creature storm type deck happens, this this card can end up coming out of the woodwork. Right. Uh, and just go really wide on turn four where it casts a bunch of one drops and something like that. Wedding Invite was another one that I, I kind oh, of looked at a little bit. Um, I'm not, I don't think it's there as I didn't include in the list, but it's... No, not that yeah, one. No, no, not that one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I know the the one that the one that either draws cards, cards makes tokens, and flips. Yeah, wedding announcement. I think is yeah, yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, th this card, uh, this card, I think has a lot of potential, mostly for the front side, like honestly. Yeah. But I think that, I think either one is is reasonable. Yeah. Like, any of the glorious anthem, it, it requires a lot of kill spells, and this format doesn't have a lot of mass removal. So. Yep. So that would be the other close to honorable mention of, of something that has some potential. But this is also just a hair slow, you know. I agree with that. You're getting all the value. It's At least it's in-step. The in-step helps. Yes. Right. All right, so Neon. This is one where I had to cut the list real <sighs> yeah. hard. All right, I will... S you go, go ahead and start it. with Neon. Uh, no, you... Okay, you I, I will say off. I left off the lands. Sure, okay. And right. I left off Lion Sash. Okay. I, I think Lion... To me, Lion Sash is... Um, it's Scoos, right? And we know Scoos is playable. Yes. So there, there's no controversy about Lion Slash. Yeah. This is the first one on my list. Okay. So yeah, th this card I think is like slam dunk, going to see play. There's a lot of white decks that don't want to have to run green right. and want better and removal. St it's stone forgeable. Right? Correct. Uh, it's st yeah, stone forge is great with it. Um, it's a rest in peace that doesn't hit yourself. So there's, if there's some decks that want to be able to play with your own graveyard a little bit, uh, it's just it's going to be incredible. So. Yeah, and I left off the lands. Uh, I think that both si the blue and green one are particularly super playable. Yes. Um, they will see play. I, uh, let's get to those. When I, I have them on my list. Let's okay. get to them later. Okay. I, I agree that, right. that it's reasonable to leave them off. So then I've got five that I think are are pretty interesting. Uh, and I will start with one. I will start with Containment Construct. Ooh. This one's on mine too. Okay. Uh, I'm suddenly bumping it to Honorable because there's too many good cards here to talk about. Right. So I'm, I'm going to not keep it on my list, but this card's very good. Um, so this card, oh, man. Um, what is it? Artificer's Intuition? Is uh, so this card of course obviously says when you discard a card you may exile that card from your graveyard if you do you may play it this turn so it's only this turn yes so you gotta be careful with it uh, but artificer's intuition did a big spike immediately uh, oh, in price because there was a basically you run through it with multiple LEDs and basically you 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 pitch an LED you get you get this you get more of them back and you're just cycling through and you can Wild. do everything um, yeah okay. Yeah, so Lotus or, or LED. Right. Let's do it. Yeah, Lotus Petals. Sure. You know, things like that. Um, but yeah, this card, even without that kind of shenanigans, anything that's le that's going to be, you're going to be pitching cards with, it. you just get crazy value, right? You pitch a land to retrace, and then you can play the land. Mm -hmm. um, you know, anytime that you're pitching off of um, draw two and discard a card, discard card, two card, or draw three, discard two, unless you draw an artifact, right? Sure, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, what you're about to pull up here, yeah, the I mean, that's that's the one that everyone in VRD's brain goes to. I'm sure immediately. Right. Uh, it's it, like being able to just play the three cards you discard off Bazaar. It feels a lot like uh, it. It feels like we haven't seen a Hollow Vine deck really pop off in VRD, but Basking Root Wall is Hollow Hollow Vine. Um, yeah, there's just a lot of options here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, I, I think th this card feels like worst case you're playing two mana for a two one. Right? Yeah, you, yeah, you can yeah. still beat down a little bit. 
Um, but no, this, this has its home in a combo deck for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's super value. Cool. Um, my next one is, I think you don't have this in your list, but uh, there is one person's name when I saw this card that I'm like, I know <laughs> for sure this card is going to be drafted. It is not on my list. Uh, Alec like Deshaw it. is the reason that this card is on my list. Because every time he comes, he plays, he play, loves to play the combo deck. Uh, where he drafts Devoted Druid and a bunch of weird green and white spells and then wins the game somehow. Yeah. Uh, usually by beating down, but sometimes by assembling a three-card combo. And this card works for that combo, right? Yeah. Devoted Druid plus this causes infinite mana uh, because you can add as many negative counters on it as you want. Because it's no longer a creature until exactly. you crew it. Yep. Uh, and then the upside of this card, though, is it is in a pinch removal. Yeah, right. it, it's good removal in right. a pinch. Right? Yeah, I mean, obviously you're not going to hit, like, a Dark Confidant or something with it, because they, they're still going to get the effect. For sure. Now, unless that Dark Confidant is beating you down. <laughs> then yep. That's different. Um, but, you know, if they have a creature that is attacking and causing problems and does not have passive abilities that you overly care about, uh, then this is going to be good removal in a pinch. You know, I mean, how are it? What, it's Crew 5? Yeah. So, so like, against a reanimator, right? They reanimate... Uh, if they reanimate Emrakul... Right. right. Does, does this work against Emrakul? It's an instance, right? I think it's an instance. So, yeah, this, this should work against it. Unless yeah. he also says color spells. Or yeah, she yeah, or it know. or whatever. Whatever this weird Eldritch phenomenon is. Uh, do, 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 do. Colored spells. Okay. okay. So, doesn't work. No, doesn't right. work. But it does work against a lot of big right. animator targets. And I think that this is just like. There's a lot of decks out there that. Oh, hey, thanks, Dragon Potter. There's a lot of decks out there that don't have the ability to have five power in play in addition to their best card. Right. So yeah, I think I think it's not quite so sourced to plowshares. You're it's not gonna better. you're not gonna take this just for that, but no. you're gonna take this with the devoted druid combo, or you know, maybe some other combo we don't think about. I think you're wrong. Actually, I think okay. I think this card might be better than Path to Exile. I think this is like mm. I think this is probably like in the top four uh, white removal spells. Okay, and I don't know where it falls in that list necessarily, but I think so. It's Swords Path. This. This and um, Prismatic. Yeah, probably. Okay. I mean, Prismatic hits such a wide range. This only okay. hits creatures. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's instant speed, right. white, remove your best creature. Right. Well, let's go to my next card then, because sure. this is the same conversation. March of Otherworldly Light. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, I, I did not. I saw this card a bunch. I know people have been going crazy about it. I think it's garbage. So it's Vista comparable. It doesn't hit walkers, mm -hmm. right? But it is instant speed. Oh, hey, Raging Levine's in chat too. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's instant speed. The fact that, like, how many cards are you exiling to this? I mean, sometimes none. I mean, you're, you know, the the exile is just extra, is extra, right? Sure. If I'm playing Vista, I'm not, you know, I'm not exiling anything to it. Most of the time, we're not worried about X is four, five, or plus. Occasionally, we are. But it, we can't hit walkers, which is what most of the four, five, plus we would be wanting to hit anyway. Um, most of the time, I'm not. But I have that capability that if I have to, if that moment's there... I have to. So that's the gravy. It's just that capability mm -hmm. um, that, hey, I can pitch a card if I need to get that two more. You know, that's fair. I, I think I walked into this too much thinking about the discounts on it. Right. And not really just thinking of it as, uh, as I'm, I'm going to pay X and destroy your X cost thing. Yeah. Um, it, it's that's I'm a paying, lot of mana, though, right? Like, at that point, you're paying three or four mana. Yeah, but we're already do, we're doing it with Vista, right? Uh, but that one, you can, that one is, is uh, that's, that's not X or less. It's X plus one or less. Right, because Vista... Not Vista, sorry. Uh, yeah, prismatic uh, Omen, an ending. Prismatic ending. ending. Prismatic ending is uh, is the number of... it's it's If you just pay zero into it, you can hit a one cost. Right. Right, whereas but, this this does not. This has to pay two mana into it to hit a one cost. Right, but this is also instant. Sure, yeah, that's fair. Right. That's fair. I, I don't think this is I don't think it's impossible to play. I'm not saying right. it's horrible or anything like that. I just think that it's... Uh, uh, okay, so Eric, Eric says, having drafted Prismatic Ending, he thinks this card is real. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I think it will definitely see play. People are going to try it. It just isn't at the top of my, uh, it's not top, not on top of my right. pile. But it was interesting because we were talking about the top of white removal spells. And it's like, oh, well, here we go. One of my list is a potentially high removal spell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, I guess, Eric's point here is actually great, which is that it's not, it's, it's not irreplaceable. I think no. it's, I think it's about the same as a bunch of these other cards. No. Uh, and Brandon coming through with the pointing out that balance is actually the best instant speed removal. Uh, when you have Teferi in play. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, Exiling Gristlebrand is pretty strong. Uh, uh, he was saying earlier that the problem with the, the re reconfiguration is you hit Grizzlebrand, but it doesn't stop the uh, draw. That, you, you know, you're stopping the beat, but not the draw. Correct. And then sometimes you're going to do that, right? Right. And it's, sometimes you're going to have to, right? I mean, worst case. at least they can't gain the life back easy. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think both of these cards are going to see play, mm -hmm. and we'll no. see which one ends up better in the end. Yeah, I agree. 
Uh, okay, so my next one is, uh, and I'm for sure going to pick the wrong one on the list, uh, but Jenga Texas. I think that this guy is huge, but mm -hmm. he's still in the range of castability eventually. Uh, I think it's obviously the place that we're going to see it as a reanimator deck. Right. Uh, but historically, cards like um, uh, Chancellor of the Annex, mm. C play. And I think that this has this is that on steroids, right? Being able to counter the first spell they cast every turn and the first relevant spell they cast every turn is going to be huge. And then it has some upside that, that it copies spells. But right. yeah, seven mana, five, five that counters their first spell every turn. Slam dunk, right? People jump through hoops, even in VRD back in the day, to spend two mana and then four spells on the same turn or something to, to flip that other card <laughs> uh, into, into that same ability. So I think that this is gonna. I think this is gonna see some play in a reanimator. We'll yeah. see if that's good. I think reanimator is probably a, uh, on the downswing just over the past couple of years. You know, I, but. it has been over the last couple of years. But I was thinking about it as I was going to bed the other night, and I think it's due for some revisits. It, it's the the trouble is that especially if you play at a table with somebody who's new, reanimator is so easy to jump into, mm -hmm. and everybody knows how to draft it. That oftentimes, even if you do have kind of a silver bullet idea with it. Uh, you're going to get boxed out by somebody else that doesn't necessarily know the format. This I play. think Jund Reanimator is probably the way to go right now. Ooh. Are you thinking Olivia is kind of like a reanimate? Uh, to no. reanimate. Well, more? I just think there's a lot of they, they've had a low, whole lot of really good green put stuff in your graveyards sure. lately, right? A whole lot of like look at the top four, take a card, put it in your graveyard. Yep. I think green is your graveyard enabler. Sure. Gives you interesting value um, that some of the other ones don't, don't have. Yeah. No, that makes sense. So yeah. I think black green or black green red, uh, you know, something like that is is pretty solid. So sure. Um, I think um, Nemo kind of went that way, and then obviously it fell fell apart on it. But yeah. had they had a couple green ones in there that I really liked um, in in their draft. So totally. Uh, what's next in yours? All right, next on mine is uh, I like this one. This I think this one's saucy. Ogre head helm. Okay. Dash um, ogre dash head. Oh my goodness. This sounds like a... Okay, so this is another one of the... This is Baby Ox. Things. Baby Ox. So you cast this on turn one or two yes. in the red deck, right? And you, if your card, if you cast some other stuff out, you swing the next turn, you hit with it, then you can sacrifice it, discard your hand, and draw three. I think this card's very bad. Uh, I, I don't feel very confident in that ability, mm -hmm. in that knowledge, but... Um, okay, this card feels, to me, the... the Closer comparison to Ox, it feels closer to Bomat Courier to me. Okay. And it feels like a two mana, slow speed Bomat Courier. Uh, and I, I, I hope I'm wrong, right? Like the idea of a red, a red deck being able to draw cards uh, late in the game after beating in a couple times is fantastic. But when I look at this, and I'm like, okay, well, let's assume that it's. You also don't have to sacrifice it, which is interesting. Ooh, that is okay. That is interesting. So you can beat, and you don't not ready to get rid of your hand yet. You can you can hold off and then equip it if you want to. Yeah. I, I can see this card C in play. This is this is one that I don't think is going to get there. Uh, the reconfigure part of it is, feels really strange to me, actually. Uh, maybe that just means that you want to keep it around. I don't know. Like, There's a lot of tension to this card in my mind, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just there's a lot of things going on with it, and it's going to be hard to see. I, it oh, feels... I did not know that hyphenated. That's interesting. That you sack the creature, not the ability. Yeah, okay. You, do, you don't sack the helm when it's on a creature. Okay, I'm more on board with this card now. I did not realize that. Yeah. I mean, the reconfigure's three, sure. but I mean, this is a card that, again, it's definitely not the highest on my list, but it is one that I, I've played it a little bit in draft. It was pretty It was pretty good for me. Um, I, I think it's saucy enough that it could find a home. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, I mean, there's, there's pl so many cards that just like spit out random 1-1s one in the red deck, right? Like the, the Den of the Bugbear, mm -hmm. uh, that one terrible 2-mana 1-1 one -one that makes a 1-1 one -one when it comes into play or dies. Uh, there's just like a lot of these like goblin type cards that end up spitting out random one ones. So yeah, yeah that that seems reasonable. And it's and a creature, and uh, you know, so if the creature dies, you still have the helm around. So I, I'm getting more convinced. I want to believe that uh, generic generic red decks that aren't trying to do broken things can exist in a in a creature based format, right? Once I see that happen, then I think this card probably goes in it. Mm -hmm. I just haven't seen that deck come together uh, often enough. So. Yeah. It's been coming more together, though. That's true. Yeah, yeah. No, the, car the cards keep happening, right? Robber of the Rich. You predicted yeah. it years ago, and someday it will happen. It is. Uh, and, <laughs> and it will keep getting better. So. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll go next with uh, with the first of the lands, okay. which is Ottawara. I think this is actually probably not quite as good as Besaidu, but it is, I think, more interesting. Um, because Besaidu is just like an unconquerable naturalize. Right. Uh, but Ottawara feels like it has a lot of potential, right? So, like, 
table stakes, right? This is replacing a basic land. It, you're using one draft pick to get a better basic land, right? I realize That's so the downside. To comment, so. uh, and has anyone ever drafted Koldatha Rebirth? No, I don't think so, actually. No, no, I don't know. I don't. That's really funny. But Eric, I do like your point. Yeah, red wants a critical mass of these type of effects. I agree. Totally. Yeah, Ottawara is, I, I think, as you said, clearly second best. Um, I think the downside of Ottawara isn't much. I mean, just because you're replacing it, basically. Exactly. Uh, I mean, the pick, fact you're right? not going to have, how often are you really going to have the legendary creatures to make it cheaper? Never. So it's going to be costly. Uh, but it's still, I, it is clearly the second best of them. Um, I think the black one being the third. Um, yeah. Black or white, I think they're close. Yeah, they're close. Yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, I know, I'm, I'm definitely on board with Ottawara, and that's why I, they, they were almost so obvious just because they're of boring, the... They're boring, yeah. Right, just because of the... Disc- and there's so much good stuff in this set. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. That, I agree. Um, cool, yeah, so what was your next... Or, let's hit Baseju, too. Yeah. Uh, Baseju is, is obviously going to see play... Yeah, the clear the best of them. Yeah. Yes. Because the thing with Baseju is that even if you don't have the Legendary, it's only two. It's only naturalized, right? Wow. And then you have to have one Legendary, which is much easier to make it a... Uh, because is it? It's just oh, it is legendary creature, so it won't count planeswalkers or, or lands. It, it's, that that ability almost doesn't matter, right? Like, because at the point where you need to cast this card, you're gonna be very happy that it's not a basic. Land. Also works really well with containment construct, by the way. <laughs> Funny, yeah. yeah, you're right. Because you pitch it, and then you can play the land. So, I did not consider that, but you're right. Yeah. That is a nice upside. Yeah, so all your channel cards can just be played then. Mm-hmm. All right, so what's your next one? All right, my next one is seen a little bit of modern play. Okay. And I think it's got some VRD heavy legs. Hedesugu consumes all. Is this the four mana flyer? No, this is a three mana um, I'm gonna saga. I'm going to spelling, I think. H-I-D-E-T. H-I-D. Got it. Yeah. E.T. We'll get there. We'll get there someday. It's not Heartless Hedges Studio. H-I-D-E-T. Yeah. There, there we go. go. Cool. Okay, so this is one of the sagas that flips. Yes. So your top is destroy each non-land permit with mana value one or less. Okay. So against... That gets tokens, obviously. So it also gets the um, the artifact decks, right? The, yes. The little bitty artifact decks that are relying heavily on... You know, your zero and one mana artifacts. Uh, and then and you constructs get, off the card. Constructs, yep. right. You get exile the graveyards, and then you get to flip it. And then it flips into a 3-3 three, three Trampler. Right. Pretty it neat. It gets bigger. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think you're playing this for the first ability, right? Because the you second are. one takes a minute to get to. Right. You're uh, playing this for the first ability. Yeah, but it definitely, like, crushes the decks that Eric and I like to draft. Mm-hmm. And that you like to draft. Uh, it crushes a lot of decks. I mean... Three mana is a lot to sweep only one drops, and it also hits your own, so you lose your mox in. Right, but three mana Ooh. gives you... I'll be right back. I need to grab a charger right. for my computer. So, I mean, the thing is, is that three mana gives you time for them to drop a few, you know, make sure there's a sufficient amount of whatever it is they're dropping, right? I mean, and, you know, with your own mox in, you're often casting this on turn two as well, if you have to, if you can. I mean, you're going to be able to do it. So, uh, this card has made a little bit of a splash in modern. It is a, a pretty popular deck there right now. And I I would not be surprised to see it, uh, you know, especially again a little bit tweaked on what people are drafting, but th- there's a couple of those decks that are going to be heavily relying on the zero and ones. Mm-hmm. Um, this seems to be very leggy for me. Yeah, I can I can imagine this. Obviously, like like every card, right? If yes, only Eric, two, your artifact decks. That's all I care about is your artifact decks. <laughs> if it could only hit, uh, if it only hit two drops, I would be so on board with this card. But yeah, no, like I I'm I'm nervous that there are enough. One, the density of one cost cards in this format. But we'll see. I mean, I, I yeah. think it's very reasonable. Yep. Um, so, yeah, then uh, th- that's five for both of us? I have one more. Oh, you have one more. Okay, go yeah. for it. I've got my big, my favorite of this. Okay. Tamishi. Tamishi. Is this T-A-M-E-S-H-I. Also? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I love this card for Commander. Okay. So, return... White next, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Return target, artifact, or enchantment card with from mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Activate only as a sorcery. That's actually the downside. If it was activated as instant, it would be broken. Yes. Um, so the, fast bond is where we first The go. downside for you for this <laughs> is it puts you in ban. Sure. Right. And you don't like three color. Um, but I've been running this in historic um, brawl. Yep. And it even in blue-white, it is 
pretty powerful, right? But in particular in VRD, where you are able to buy back Black Lotus, you are able to buy back, um, you know, Lion's Eye Diamond, you'll be able to buy back a lot of those type of cards, then you are now increasing yourself in value significantly. You do get to draw a card the first time you do it as well, right? Mm -hmm. So any first time you return a permanent to the owner's hand, including balancing some of theirs, you get to draw a card. Um, so, but obviously if with green, when you have a fast bond or you have an Azusa or something like that, you even get to increase the value out of it. Uh, the shenanigans amount are pretty high as long as you're sacrificing things. Even long grindy games, I mean, I've had so many players just scoop to when I'm reanimating Elspeth Conquer's death for the fourth time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, and if you have a way to sack those things, that makes it e even more powerful then. So, so I have this on my on my I hope cards. So I literally have in all caps next to it. I hope that this card is playable. Right. Uh, I don't necessarily see it though. I think that it's a uh, uh, yeah. The, the once a turn design, good point, Dragon is is an interesting space, and it makes. A lot of these cards less broken and then able to push things in fun ways. Right. I don't. I don't know why exactly. the The card that this comes to mind immediately is the uh, is the Lady Emery. Emery Lady of the Locks. Mm -hmm. It's like it has the same kind of feeling for me. Where this is a card that they play well together. Yeah, true. <laughs> so true. But where uh, you play it and it, uh, it you you play it and you play it very late game. Uh, you're not like trying to aggro this out, but like once you've kind of stabilized with counter spells, then you play it and it just takes over the entire match, right? Um, but those kind of cards feel like they're really hard to land in the early game, and if you if you it's it's like it's inevitability, right? But how many other cards are inevitability at that point? But it, it, land Lotus, rebuy Lotus, return the land, play the land next turn. Even I mean, it, you know, land Lotus this, rebuy rebuy Lotus. Sure. Yeah, no, that's fair. Right. Yeah, maybe the weird combo potential for this is, is up there enough. Right. Um, and maybe it's a Lotus-only card. card. Maybe it's a card you only want if you have Black Lotus. That's reasonable, yeah. Right. I mean, and that's a possibility. But, you know, like, it with Lotus is absolutely crazy. All right, I'm going to pull up one uh, of my uh, my maybe cards. Okay. Which I don't actually know how to spell this card. We'll see. Mm, but yeah, yeah. This card, yeah. Oh, man, the front side of it is just so bad. But the channel of a three-mana discarded unconquerable mana leak feels very strong. Yeah. Um, I think you're almost never going to be stifling things with it, but sometimes you will, and you'll feel good about it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the three-mana unconquerable mana leak seems that, don't, overlo don't overlook the stifle. Like, you're not going to be much, but there, there are many times where I st a stifle is... I main-decked it in that bug list, and it was sure. strong. But yeah, no, I, I don't know for sure this card's going to see play, but it seems pretty good. Again, back to reanimator. I, you know, if I have to reanimate this after doing something, I'm okay with that. Fair that point. Seems, you know, I mean, it's a 5-7 beefy that's hard to kill, right? I mean, that's something. It's true. Yeah, I, I don't, I think this is mostly going to be a card that's like, I want to beat the control matchup, and we're both, we're like, there's a bunch of uh, low-cost counterspell decks running around. This one feels like the card that can break that synergy. Yeah. It, it almost feels like Flusterstorm to me. It's a weird comparison, but it kind of feels in that realm. Yeah. No, I like this card. I think this card's yeah. good. Uh, and then I had a bunch of other ones on the list, like Sphere to Companion, which I looked and I was like, oh, this card's going to see play. And then I looked Elder Elvish Visionary, sees mm -hmm. no play whatsoever. Um, I think the ninjas are all, like, too bad a little bit. Yeah, I know Cody uh, Jaster Rogue has a bunch of ninjas in his uh, ABC draft right now. So we're going to see if he pulls off the Ninjutsu Blightsteel. Oh, that'd not. be neat. <laughs> yeah, if you finally see the Emmer Cool with the Ninjutsu. Yeah, I like this card. This card's on my, my watch list. This card's been doing really cool things in Popper. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it was doing pretty pretty good things before Loris got banned, too. Oh, sure, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, I, I can see this card basically like slotting into a Loris deck, or if we finally figure out who can make uh, Storm work, mm -hmm. um, this could be a card for it. I yeah. don't know. And then the last one I'm going to mention, even though there's no chance to see his play, uh, just because I think it's, like, so sweet, is re the reality this chip. card is so good. It was almost on my list. Um, yeah. I just don't know with the reconfigure. and me no. the, the real power comes with the reconfigure. Yes. And I just think that lowers it down just a hair. Right. What kind of blue deck are you going to be that can, like, really take advantage of Future Sight that right. has multiple blue creatures? I don't right. know. It just, it, there's nothing that makes any sense for it. But it's so cool that yeah, I want to show it. card's good. Yes. Nah, cool. she is the best ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. So, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, there, there's probably... Uh, th there are a couple of future sites you can pay five mana and get the same effect without having to do all this work. Right. Um, but nevertheless, Reality Chip is, is a really cool card. I wish it were good. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this set, though. Um, and, and even just some, you know, random... And I mentioned earlier, like, one... Uh, I cannot... Someone in chat helped with the name. The green... 
a uh, snake that double that uh, plus one plus one your enchantment creatures and lets you pay a green to copy an enchantment ability. Does anyone remember the name? Sure. That's yeah. a, that was another one that was very close to being on my list. So that's reasonable. So it's like a two drop for a two two, and it gives your enchantment creatures plus one plus one, and then you can pay a green and tap it and basically double up any enchantment trigger. <laughs> Uh, so Brandon wants us to talk about Mech Titan Core, which is terrible. Of course Brandon wants us to talk about uh, Mech Titan Core. It's going to be very bad. Um, Until Brandon kills us with it. Yeah, it's still with that at that point. Weaver of Harmony is the card that you're talking about. Okay, yeah, Weaver. There we go. Um, so th this all being aside, right? There's lots of new fun cards coming out, probably way more out of Kamigawa than out of the next one, or out of the last one. Yeah. Um, we don't have enough of the new set to allow the new set to be uh, drafted. No. This, um, sadly, there's only 28 of them spoiled, so that won't be available next weekend. But we are definitely going to see some... Besager is going to get drafted. Right. right. And we've got a veteran crew this coming weekend. Correct. Um, so no, no, no first-timers. I will not be here. I'm in the process of moving. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I might make an appearance and do one round of commentary if I can uh, get the X to watch the kids for a little bit. Um, we do have Mason and Swifty coming down for Chicago, oh, so we're going to see yeah. we're gonna have the, the re-up of Chicago uh, attempting to take down St. Louis again. So Mason's going to try maybe some goblin shenanigans, we'll see. He'll, he'll try something know. saucy. That's true. Okay, so that that's an excellent segue to the next section, which right. is 2022 in VRD. How, how is this different than last year? And for me, the, the word that comes to mind immediately to what Dragon was saying earlier, actually, is goblins. I think that... The strength of that deck in the in the in the draft that we all did together was just mind blowing, and I think that it points out that there's a lot of these like tribal type decks that are not easily hated, right? Like people didn't take Tyvander's Crusade and they should have, but right. there's a lot of these like tribal decks that aren't necessarily as easily hateable because you need to split between counter spells well, and creatures. The the thing with that Goblin's deck was it was a combo deck, right? Like yes, I mean he could win by the aggro, he did win by the aggro, yes. But, like, I watched him majestically win during the upkeep through hate cards yes. by by comboing, right? So with con Conspicuous Snoop shenanigans. And but, but I think that's what these decks will do, right? right? I think elves will do the same thing. But I think that those decks are just like, you, you don't fight anybody, right? And this is something that Mason loves to do, is draft these is draft these weird monocolored, uh, monocolored plus black. combo decks. Yeah, pl plus... Plus hate, Thought Seize Inquisition. And then right. not play them at all. Right. Yeah. Um, but no, I think that like that, that these these kind of like really focused aggro combo strategies have a lot of potential, and I think that they need to be explored yeah. more. Um, I, the other thing I know I've noted so you know this year the big thing is we've had a lot of the discords taken off, right? So yes. we've had a lot of drafts there, and, and I think that when stakes are not on the line, people are willing to get a little try stuff. Yeah, right? there's, there's yeah. a lot more experimentation. Yeah, a lot more experimentation, but that opens up our minds to a lot of things. I, I think. Um, so, you know, we've seen people push the Enchantress. Um, we ha have seen a variety of different things. I think there's been some adaptation to Walkers. I, I, I think they were they were riding strong. I think they're still strong, but I think people have started to figure out how to beat them a little more consistently. I um, so, I, you know, I think that they've settled. They're not bottom anywhere near, but they've definitely settled in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, the spells decks, I, I think, have uh, really up my mind. Like I am, we have an article coming out. Where I know where uh, Dom Harvey talks about this. We have an article coming to the website, and I, but I've seen it. I have opened my mind to being time walk being more than just an explore at this point, because I've been watching it in the aggro spells decks, where sure. you know you are, you know, it's not about the spell. It's about I'm attacking with Merc Tide again, or this army of pyromancer tokens and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I've lost to it several times now. <laughs> Right, no, um, I think that yeah, people kind of in the past have seen yeah, time walk is like an excellent way to like get some value, uh, or it's a way to like let you get a couple of activations out of a planeswalker. But the idea of I'm just gonna kill you with it is, is also a huge right, one. Right. Right. So yeah, I, I think there's some something I still haven't seen time walk where I want to see it, which is a walker's deck. Mm -hmm. Like I was going to take it. Uh, I had a plan to grab it in the lightning draft, but it went earlier than I was hoping it would. Okay. I was hoping to grab it around three. Yep. Um, but it went pretty quick. So I really want to see it in a Walker's deck um, still there. But yeah, I, I think that there has just been this uh, kind of opening of a, a variety of, of ideas and experimentation that's really pushed things a little bit. And I, I think we're in an interesting spot. I, I think we probably hit a point where on the Discord there was so much going on that it, it's kind of lagged. We've seen a, a lag in games getting completed where, you know, particularly one of the things about the online Discord drafts is that 
when you're losing, it's very hard to push through. Totally. Right? Like, I had a, a deck. It was the most fun deck I've played, actually. It was, like, blue-green ramp that could cast prime time on the second turn and did dumb stuff. Um, but, like, I, I was winning. I won one game every match, but I was losing in general. And I hit a point where I was, like, one and four. And I was like, man, oh, God. And I finally had to make myself complete the last two. Yep. Um, so I think it's easy to get sidetracked on those. So we're seeing a lack of completion at this point. Um, so I think there was a big energy and the energy's waned, but I think we're getting ready to probably see another big energy coming up. So, and that energy waning also though led to some interesting stuff, which we discussed earlier, which was things like the bonkers draft. Mm -hmm. Uh, the bonkers draft used, uh, like the, um, what do you call them from the MTGO? Conspiracies. Conspiracies, but yeah. also the, um, uh, Oh, the avatars. The avatars. Yeah, the vanguard. Cards. The vanguard from MTGO. Yes. Uh, and then the ABC draft. So there's been these variety of alternative things that have been popping up to also kind of pick up that energy as well. Totally. Yeah, and I think that like that's going to be a fun... Um, I, I expect to basically see that in the week or two after we do one of St. Lotus like streamed tournaments, mm -hmm. so after this weekend, we'll probably see a couple of Discord drafts fire off for all the people that... Uh, feel FOMO and she's like, oh man, I really want to do a VRD because they're really fun. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I, I expect you to play one of yeah, those. Yeah. Um, and I probably will as well, right? Because I'm, right. I'm not playing this time. Um, maybe Eric and, and Jason will get in some of those as well. But I, I think that, like, we'll see. Uh, I have a kid coming up the middle of this year, so that's going to probably push back yeah. the VRD too. Um, probably to August is my guess. Right. Um, so we're going to look at August. We know we have a uh, Nerd Rage Games is coming down, so we lose a lot of our judges to that in August. Yep. And then we have Gen Con in August for people that might be going. So, but we'll look at August and try to get it hammered in there. Um, but yeah, I, I also expect us to do probably a in-person draft that we're not going to stream, but probably then uh, do commentary after on something. I don't know. There's going to be some more stuff going on about this. Yeah. Um, and then so, uh, so Dragon Fodder, the all of the drafts are linked from Saintlotus.org. If you go under decks, there's a section at the bottom that links to the Discord draft. I think it was. Uh, Discord eight or seven that had the all, had the goblins in it. But yeah, I want to say it was seven. If you just search across the whole sheet for uh, for Snoop, you'll find it there. So, uh, and then I am super hyped for streets uh, just for the theme. Other than the, the possible drug thing, I'm not too hyped about. But uh, mm. you know, I did not I did not hear about this. But oh yeah, the, they uh, part of their theme is that the, they compete over this mana drug type thing. They they don't call it a drug, but they call it a drug. But they suggested that stores as part of their, like, building up energy for it, like, make something that looks like this and basically, like, have pretend crack to, uh, uh, you yikes. know. Yeah, I know, but that set seems... Swifty, cool. I did not ignore the Boggles deck. I just beat it beat it down. I mean, that's... <laughs> a, actually, I like that list. It scared me, and I was happy to beat it. So, yeah, it was a scary list. I feel like that Boggles deck in that draft was actually very interesting because everybody took enchantment hate, right? It kind of, like, drained two picks from every other person because everyone was terrified of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. then, and then, sadly, it also just got overshadowed by the goblins' ridiculousness. That's so. true. <laughs> cool. Well, this is. Uh, hope you. I hope everyone enjoyed it. I hope this is a good crash course and pre up for uh, for Saturday. Yeah. And if you're new and you want to get get in, you want discussion, right. join the Discord. Um, people are there all the time. There's lots of channels. See what's going on. Um, as I said, I'm sure we're going to have new ones firing soon. Um, so we're always looking for new people. Uh, it's one of the things I think that when we, we hit that surge, I think it was also just the same people doing it over and over. Correct. So I think that's what kind of slowed it down. So new people joining in those will obviously help the energy quite a bit. So, but more important than that, this Saturday, we're going to be doing uh, a live in-person St. Lotus event. There will be a pointer source pizza. There will be all of the shenanigans that you can expect. No uh, small person sightings though. That's true. Logan's going to be out of town. It's going to be the first VRD he's missed in his yeah. life. There we go. Uh, and yeah, it's really excited to see if but we're going to have, we're gonna have Reptar on announcement uh, yep. from Cabalcast. So that's going to be a good time. And we will, uh, we're going to be here all day. It'll be a, the long haul, the full show again. So dra right. draft on through. So tune in and check us out. Cool. Thanks everyone for hanging out.